Hello, welcome back. So we're going to work on what we did last time with combining the bow and the cello together, but hopefully we can actually get some playing in today. So let's get our cellos. So I've got my cello here. Okay, I've got it slightly facing towards the right so that I can get a better access for the A string. And we've got our bows and we're holding it in our nice bow hold. So to start with, we're not going to do any heavy bowing. We're just going to rest the bow on the G string. And we're going to feel about where our arm needs to be. We mentioned it briefly last week. You need to make sure that your arm isn't too high as that's going to create tension in your upper arm and it doesn't want to be too low as then that's going to really restrict your movement. So we want somewhere in the middle. Okay, so just watch your arm drop into the string. When you found the right place and you can really relax, you should see the weight of your arm pulling down on the wood of the bow into the string and if you look down you can see that the wood will flex of the bow and it will bounce if you relax and if you lift up your arm okay so when you know that you know that you're in the nice relaxed position ready to start playing to begin with we're going to do some nice long bows okay now when we do long bows i want you to bow all the way from one end to the other okay we're not going to start about here back okay we need to use the entirety of the bow so that's all the way from the metal ring which holds the hair all the way up to the tip and if you turn and look at your bow you'll see that the hair actually goes over the wood a little bit that's all a playable surface okay you can use that so when we're bowing I want you to go all the way up to the edge of that okay if you come off and you hit the little plastic or ivory or silver depending on your bow if you hit that then that's fine but just try uh, when you're bowing try and remember where that is so that it doesn't happen and you don't get that little clunk sound so if we try that so we're going to start all the way over at the metal ring at the frog of the bow Now for those with good ears, you'll notice that as I got towards the tip, the sound faded as I was trying to control the bow. Now what we need to make sure that we do is we get a nice consistent sound and that we're not dropping in, dy in dynamics, is the word, volume rather. We're not going to go really quiet when we get towards the tip and we're not going to get really heavy and gritty when we get to the bow. We need a nice consistent bow speed. So let's try that again. better that time. I'll just get to the reel. So that was much better. What we need to think about when we're bowing is the weight of our arm, the point of contact, so we get where we're touching the string from where the bow is and what how we angle the bow. And lastly, we need to think about bow speed. So that's three things, and they are the fundamentals for bowing. So I'll just repeat those again. That's bow speed, point of contact, and weight. So if we look at bow speed, obviously if I speed up the, the rate of which I bow, you're gonna get a different sound depending on where you are in the cello. So if I bow like this. sound but if I change that as I bow so if I start off slow we get different volumes and we get different qualities of sound okay now where we actually play on the cello so the point of contact so that refers to both the bow and where we bow between the fingerboard and the bridge we also get different sounds if I play on the very edge of the hair to get quite a thin sound if I play on the full like sort of body of the hair I'm gonna get a fuller sound I just said full twice there didn't I yeah we're gonna get an emptier thinner sound whereas if we play with all of the hair we're gonna get a much fuller sound and if you're playing close to the bridge and you're playing a really sort of loud like solo style piece then we need to play with all of the hair close to the bridge at a slower speed 
Anyway, but we'll get into that in more detail later. Let's go back to our open bows. So we're just going to go backwards and forwards slowly. So you can continue that, do it on every string, learn how your arm needs to move. So we talked last week about our shape of where the bow needs to go. And so with the A string we need to make sure that we bow outwards so that we get a full straight bow. And when we're on the C string we need to pull slightly towards us so for the exact same reason. For this next exercise we're going to need a metronome. Okay, Metronomes come in many shapes and sizes. Here's one for example. So this is a metronome in tuner from Korg. So if I press play, it'll start ticking really slowly. They come in sort of mechanical forms. This is like an old metronome here. So it's got a pendulum and it will tick. Very nice. And then the most common metronome, which is around nowadays, which is what I'm going to guess that you've got as a beginner, is one that's on your smartphone or tablet or computer, okay, such as this. So with this again you can change the time and you can press play and it'll count for you. Always make sure you get a metronome, okay, whether it's a physical one or whether you download one onto your phone or if you use one on the computer. Okay, if you're going to Google you can type in metronome and Google's got its own little app which you can use on the desktop. Or, but mo more commonly, you can just get one from either the App Store or the Google Play Store, depending on what phone you've got. Okay, but make sure you've got one. I'm going to stick with my little digital one here. So we're going to set it to 60 BPM. It should sound like that. And now that that's ticking, we're going to take our open strings and we're going to try and play four counts per bow. Okay, so before you actually put the bow to string, do some air bowings. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, get to know what speed you've got to go at. Okay, and then when you know roughly, put your bow on the string and start bowing. Okay, so let's just try that. Three, four. One. So I didn't quite get my speed right there. So what we're looking for is that in the count you get all the way up to the very ends of each part of the bow. So let's try that again. So I just need to bow a bit faster. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. See, that was much better. Now what we're looking for is a nice consistent sound. We don't want to have to change our speed halfway through. So if I start like this, two, three. Four. I didn't realise oh, I'm not going to make it and then speed up which you can tell because it will get louder or the sound will get grittier or softer depending on what you're doing so we need to practice and we need to make sure that we get a nice consistent sound all the way through so after you've mastered that do it on each string you know a thousand times you know learn how you have to move your arm for it then we can change it and you can do eight counts Okay, so let's do eight, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can do that and then keep multiplying it up. Double it each time. So start at four, go to eight, 16, and then if you can master it, go to 32, which is gonna be really hard. So for the longer you have to count for, I'd say the closer you need to move to the bridge. Okay, the closer you are to the bridge, the slower the bow speed that you need to sound it. Okay, because if I try and play really quick bows really close to the bridge, it doesn't sound like a whole note. It sort of sounds like a cough, basically. Whereas if I play really fast bows close to the fingerboard, it sounds really nice, but if I play really slow bows close to the fingerboard, you 
get the same effect where it doesn't quite sound right. That's because each side of the string closer to the bridge or closer to the fingerboard needs different bow speeds and different points of contact in order to sound to its full potential. So if I want to count to 16, I'm going to play quite close to the bridge and I'm going to have a really slow bow speed. So let's just try that. Four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So if you're listening carefully, you'll notice that the sound actually broke up a little bit because I was adjusting the speed. Now, this is why you need to practice it all the time. If you keep practicing it, you'll know how fast you need to move and you won't need to make those adjustments, which will hurt your sound. The next exercise I'm gonna show you is to work on weight. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the C string and we're gonna get really close to the heel. Okay, not all the way there, probably about two or three centimeters away from the heel. And we're just gonna really sink our arm into the string and you'll see it will bounce. And what you need to do is without playing a note, just move it, push really hard into it and move the string. So if I hold my cello up, you'll be able to see my, my C string moving and wobbling backwards and forwards if you look really carefully. See? So we're gonna do that and you're gonna understand how much weight you need. And then finally, after you've pushed and pulled, just for about 10 seconds, let all the weight go. So on your down bow, on your next pull rather, we're just gonna release. So we're gonna go push, pull, push, pull, push. And let it just ring out, okay? Let all the weight go and you'll sound the note. So let's try that again. So we're gonna go push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push. Now I'm just doing a random number of pushes and pulls, but do it until you understand sort of the weight, okay? You can do it twice, push, pull. You can do it three times, push, pull, push, pull. Doesn't matter, just keep doing it, okay? And you can do that on each string, okay? Learn the weight that you need to put in for the note to sound. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, yeah? Okay, so that looks at weight. So that's called, well, hasn't got a name really, but if you think about it, it's very similar to a wobbly tooth. Okay, so when a tooth's wobbly, you wiggle it and you pull it and you shouldn't, but we all do it because, you know, we just have to have a play with it until finally the tooth comes out. And that's what that's demonstrating. So we're wobbling, we're having a play with the tooth and then all of a sudden, pop, comes out. All right, I'm going to leave it there today. Okay, so as a whole, there isn't really a lot there but it's a lot to actually think about and practice. So if you watch it and you take on the exercises and you actually practice them and you think about them, you're, it's the foundations for a good bowing technique, okay? So we're gonna remember there are three factors which influence bowing. Point of contact, weight, and bow speed. I forgot there, that's why there was a bit of a pause. Whoops, sorry. So one more time, weight, bow speed, point of contact. I keep saying them in a different order every time, but I don't care. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Practice.